Um, good morning, everybody. Emmanuel, my name is Titilola Sapiwe Labode. Um, I, I'm from Zimbabwe, I'm half Nigerian, half Zimbabwe. The woman beside me is my mother. That's um, Honorable Dr. Ruth Labode from Zimbabwe as well. My testimony begins, um, f I'll start with the crisis. So I went to university in England um, in 2004. Um, I picked up certain habits um, that affected me. Um, one of the habits was smoking and drinking. Um, I used to smoke for, I smoked for eight years and drinking was the same eight years. Um, it was quite bad. It wasn't one or two cigarettes a day. I used to smoke 20 cigarettes a day. Um, my parents used to send me money um, for my tuition and for my accommodation and my welfare. They never wanted me to get a, a job whilst I was studying. They wanted me to complete my studies without working. But because of my habits, um, my smoking and my drinking, they're quite expensive when you're in the UK. So I secretly got a job and um, to support my habits of drinking and smoking. Um, it was really bad because I passed with a, a 2 2 degree um, in accounting, BC in accounting, but I spent most of my time out. I would, I would go out every day. I'd be in the club, I'd be smoking, I'd be drinking. Um, just by God's grace, um, nothing bad happened to me. But then my, my health, I, I, I wasn't healthy. You know, I was very, very skinny. Um, I had bad skin. I just wasn't healthy. Um, after a while, my parents begged me to come back home to Zimbabwe. And I used to refuse. I'd say, no, I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm OK in England. I'm working. I, I'm, I'm independent. But then because every, my people that I surrounded myself with around me were also smokers and drinkers. So to me, it was a normal life, you know? I'll say, oh, this is the life here, you know? You're just in Africa, you're just backwards. You don't understand, you know? Um, so anyway, eventually, um, mom and dad convinced me to move back to Zimbabwe, where, where I grew up. And um, they brought me to synagogue. Um, that was in June 2014. Okay, and um, when I came to synagogue, I was in the prayer line. Um, I received my anointing water, and I was also blessed, and the man of God, Prophet T.B. Joshua, laid his hands on me. And when he laid his hands on me, um, I, I felt this electricity going through my body. And then after that, he didn't touch me, he just moved his hand. And I fell on the floor, and I was convinced that somebody had pulled me down. Because afterwards, I went to my mom, and I said, Mom, somebody pulled me down so I can fall. And then she said, no, no, you were by yourself. And I was so convinced. But then when I was at home, I watched the video, and there was no one standing next to me. So I was like, OK. So anyway, I went back home. I went back. I tried to go back to my habits <laughs> of smoking. And I was trying to force the issue, because to me, it was cool, you know, um, having a cigarette, having a drink when you're out. Um, when I started smoking, I started feeling sick. I feel like um, I've got a lot of phlegm, like mucus in my throat. And then I feel tired, I feel dizzy. It just wasn't going with my body anymore. So eventually, um, I started cutting down. And um, eventually, I stopped smoking. But whilst I used to smoke, whilst I was in England and drink and go out, I used to have a lot of bad dreams. Um, I would dream of snakes, you know, I would dream of um, me having intercourse. Um, it was just like just bad dreams. I dream of scorpions, spiders, all sorts. And um, also af after that, um, when after my deliverance at synagogue, I had a dream of Prophet TB Joshua. He actually came to me. My dream. I was having a cigarette. I was holding it in my hand like this. He came to me and he pulled it from my mouth and he broke it in half. So I believe that's where my my um, deliverance started from that dream when he visited me in that dream. And I want to give glory to the Lord because I'm a new creation in Christ right now and I'm much healthier, I'm happier. Hallelujah. Before, when I would try to stop smoking on my own, um, I will stop for like three months, but then if somebody was smoking in front of me, I would follow them and inhale the air behind them because I'd be craving, you know? And even the same with drinks, I, I would try to stop drinking and then I'll secretly buy my bottle of wine and go to my room. 
but then you're just deceiving yourself because at the end of the day, you're still drinking and God knows you're still drinking. But then after the man of God touched me, even if someone's smoking next to me, I actually move away. I just move away and I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's like poison to me. I don't mm. want the smell of smoke next to me. Mm. And even with alcohol, I don't crave. Before I would crave every day, I had to have a glass of red wine. You know, it was a must. My mouth wouldn't feel right. But now, I don't even think about alcohol. You know, I'm happy. I'm, I'm just fresh. I'm, I'm like a new creation. I'm, Shall yeah. we put our hands together for Jesus Christ? <laughs> now, we want you to paint a clearer picture of how bad the situation was when you were uh, having this uh, addiction to smoking and drinking. What are some of those terrible moments that you find difficult to forget when you were having this problem? Um, I'll give you a couple of experiences I had that were very bad. Um, I was out with my friends. Um, I got very, very drunk. And I started vomiting in public. And I spent the night, because my friends wanted to stay out, so they didn't care about how I was feeling. So I spent the night in the club in the toilet, being sick. I was just vomiting and vomiting. And then the last terrible experience I had was when I came back to Zimbabwe. And I came back with that lifestyle, by the way. I'm from England. So I continued it in Zimbabwe. And I went out. I drank a lot. I smoked. I think 20 cigarettes that night. And when I got home, I was so dizzy, I couldn't walk. The door of the car was opened, and I came crawling out of my car. And um, at home, we have dogs. So those dogs actually crawled beside me. That's how bad it was. I was crawling on the ground with dogs to the front door. And that's where my mother was. And she looked at me in disgust. And I just, the, the, I mean, when I think about it now, I feel sad, but at the time, I would be annoyed at her. Like, I'd be like, ah, what's your problem? You know, this is how I've always lived my life. Mm. Um, you can't just try and change me. That was my attitude before. Mm. You know, I didn't understand why she was trying to stop me from doing what I wanted to do, because to me, that was normal. Mm. So now, um, when I look back at it, it's, 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 it's sad. It's, you know, it's heartbreaking. Like, you waste so much time, you spend so much money on things that just destroy your body, you know? When, when the Lord God gives you life, he's giving you Jesus, and that's all you need. So I'm just grateful, that's all I am. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. So you said all this while you were smoking, drinking, what were you doing, and how were you able to uh, source for money to be able to uh, keep up these bad habits? Okay, like I mentioned earlier, um, I went to England as a student um, for university. Um, my parents did not want me to work. They wanted me to focus on my studies only. But then, because of my habits that they were not aware of, I went on my own and got a part-time job. I was working in a call center whilst I was at university. And I used my money that they would send to me to buy cases of cigarettes. Especially when I come back home at the airport um, in Zimbabwe, cigarettes are very cheap. So I'd buy cases of cigarettes. And mom wouldn't know. She wouldn't know. She'd have no idea. And you know in Africa, if your child's doing those kind of things, it makes a parent look bad. And, but then I didn't care. You know, I was saying, this is my addiction. It's my habit. It's my right. And I'd buy cases of cigarettes. When I get to England, I'd smoke Marlboro. Marlboro cigarettes are very expensive. And those are the ones I wanted. And it left me broke over time. My dad even gave me his credit card one time because um, he just thought, oh, my daughter, you know, like he loves me. But he didn't know that I was supporting this habit of mine with his money. Mm. Yeah. And now all of this is, is over. Yeah, it's all things of the past. I found God now, so I'm happy. Praise Shall we put our hands together for Jesus one more time? Okay, um, this is me um, whilst I was at university on a night out with my friends. Um, if you look closely, I'm not sure if you can see properly, um, I'm holding a cigarette in my hand. Um, that's us in the club, and we're just having um, drinks and cigarettes. Okay, point to, point to you in the picture. Okay, that's me in the oh, middle. Okay. Over there. 
That's the cigarette. If That's I just zoom in for you. Okay. You can see the cigarette in my hand. Oh, okay. And all my friends, you can see my friend's cigarette. We're all smokers. We, we were all in the same... Okay. And then that's another picture of me. Um, this is at a house party um, in summertime in England. Where are you, where are you in the picture? Um, I'm in a place called Grimsby. That's me over there. Wow. I'm lying down. That's, yeah. And that's me mm. holding a cigarette again. And you can see the box mm. on my lap. If, if you look closely to, um, on my lap, you can see a box of cigarettes there. So that's, that was my habit. That was my life. And it wasn't good. Okay, to God be the glory. Now all things pass away, all things become new, right? Amen. Let us put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Well, as the man of God, Prophet T.V. Joshua says, when Jesus Christ enters our lives, he puts an end to our past and gives birth to our future. And today, we thank God Almighty for the life of our sister, who has been delivered from her past life for smoking, drinking, and now she's a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things pass away. Glory be to God in the highest. Emmanuel. God is with us. By the grace of God, I'm Honorable Ruth La, Dr. Ruth Labode, a member of parliament in the Zimbabwe parliament. Uh, for me, I actually urged my daughter to give this testimony. Not so much about her testimony, but I want to talk to parents. Uh, we work hard every time. We chase money. We chase money like you are chasing wind because we want our children to live well. And um, we then send them abroad without preparing them for the evil that is in the world. For we think because if you can pay for your school fees and your child passes the exam, that's it. That's not it. The child is not ready. He, the, the devil is waiting for the child somewhere in Hull or in Liverpool, and your child is not prepared. You have not taken your child to God. But you have not taken your child to God because you yourself are a lukewarm Christian. That is not important to you. And yet that is the most important thing, is to prepare your child for the time, they, for what they will face in the world. And I believe it is wrong for us. I know for, for sure, for me, what was important was me and my husband have paid the school fees. Then we phone, have you passed your exams? Yes. We didn't know in the meantime the child is decaying. The child is just dying a natural death in the real life. Yes, by the grace of God, they are passing the exam. But uh, that, what is to become of them in the future, that certificate may be useless. So um, I'm really urging parents that uh, we need to take our children to God, especially when they are young. We just don't, we shouldn't just take them to church. Because I took them to church. But they were playing around in church, going to Sunday school, doing nothing. And then we go home. After that, we go to Kentucky chicken. We eat chicken, we go home. And we do not even discuss what, was this, what we had in church. So it was a religious approach to things. And that religious approach is what created her for four or seven years in UK, not to have a church, not to have attended any service because of that. Because she never learned anything. That for her, church was a necessary school where while uh, her mother is attending service, she'll be playing. So what I'm asking parents is to say, this, this world is a terrible world. Let's be careful and uh, protect our children. And it's not us to protect our children. It's take, take them to the person that gave them to you in the first place, the gift, Jesus. He's the one who gave them to you. I'll take you to Matthew... 7, verse 16 to 20, where they say, um, a mango cannot beget a, a pineapple, which means the people to blame in these children. In other words, the child you have produced, when you, saw your child, you see your child misbehaving, look at yourself. That's your mirror. That's you. So the, what I'm trying to say is that we also have a bl we should blame ourselves in what has become our children. Me, uh, me and my husband have blamed ourselves because for sure we were in the world. While we were in the world, we were doing some religious activity on Sundays. But the truth was we were in the world. So what did we uh, pass on to our children? The world things. So later, when I saw and I heard, when my daughter came back to Zimbabwe, I did not even know she was smoking. She used to sneak out in the night and go in the garden and smoke. 
and come back in the house, and we thought all was well. The day I started seeing her drinking habits getting bad, I knew that I'm in trouble. I started pumping her with anointing water. Sometimes she'll be sleeping on her bed, I'll go in her room, I'll spray the room, I'll spray her, and I'll pray, and I'll pray, I'll say, God, please, I have failed. I'm handing over this child to you. You gave me this child, redeem this child from this habit. So when we came, when the child was finally delivered, I found joy. I found joy because she's now actually a lay preacher at our church. For me, that is extraordinary from where she's coming from. Wow. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. So were you with her at the prayer line uh, section where the man of God prayed for her? Tell us what happened. Uh, I was with her. It was uh, herself, I, and the dad. And when the man of God just, he waved his hand, and she went and fell. In fact, I was worried about she was going to be injured. She fell down, and in the meantime, I also fell one side, and my husband fell another side. But when we stood up, she said something very interesting. She said, Mommy, somebody pulled me. I didn't, I didn't fall. I said, no, not even the man of God touched you. She, he just waved his hand, and you went on your own. And that was it. From that time, and there was a time we came, and then there was a night, an all-night prayer here, that Friday, and she vomited. She used to have uh, this earring they put in the nose. She used to have that earring. The earring popped out. Maybe those were signs that uh, her body is not clean. There's a lot of uh, things that are not supposed to be there. I don't know. We took it lightly. We said it's deliverance, and we went home. But I'm so glad. I'm grateful to God. Uh, God has been kind to us, and one by one is dealing with us as a family. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Mama. Thank you for that wonderful word of advice to parents. And uh, we would like to listen to your word of advice now as a youth. Please, we want you to uh, address the youth all over the world concerning this smoking, drinking, and other forms of addiction that actually tarnish uh, the future of the youth today. And thank God you are delivered from it. So what do you want to tell them? Okay, Emmanuel to all the youth all over the world. Um, first of all, I want to encourage you to know and understand your Bible. Okay, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then everything else will follow. Do not surround yourself with people who are of the world. I started smoking because I was imitating my friends who were smokers, but I ended up overtaking them and smoking more cigarettes than they were. So you need to surround yourself with people of God, people with the same mission. Listen to your parents. When you go to church, don't um, go because you have to go. Find it in your heart. Pray to God. Ask God to open up your heart and make you have hunger for his words. Ask God to show himself to you. Ask him to make you understand. The Holy Spirit will guide you and be your teacher. You know? Um, so it's, it's, it's important. For me, it was my environment, the people that I had. At university, there were people that were Christians. But to me, they were boring. You know? And in the world, it's not all about being liked by other people. It's about, about doing what is right for God. That is what you... Because eventually, you're going to hear about God. Eventually, you're going to know, realize what you're doing is bad. So there's no point wasting years or wasting money, wasting time on things that will just kill you faster. Because God has given us a gift of life, you know? If you walk the path of righteousness, you have a longer life. If you, if, if you walk the path of sin, your days are numbered. So... To all the youth, um, it's not worth it. Just listen to your parents, come back to God, and surround yourself with good people. And, and the Bible, the Bible is your, is your key. Your Bible is your guide. It's your map. It's everything. You should know your Bible, understand it, and do what the Bible says. Don't just read it and be a Pharisee. Do what the Bible says. That's the main thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's clap for Jesus Christ. Thank you for that wonderful word of advice. And to youth all over the world, that is a food for thoughts. Because the, the Bible says, bad friends are epidemics. Wayward friends are epidemics. And bad companies corrupt good manners. So wherever we find ourselves, in the campus, at work, at school, anywhere, we must 
we must not be too quick to trust, and we must not follow bad companies that will lead us to a wayward life. And now that you have been set free, remember that Jesus Christ has delivered you uh, so that you might follow him. And now I want to encourage you to also make the word of God a standard for your life. And as you do so, the blessings of God Almighty will continue to unfold in your life and your future is guaranteed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you.